My name's Justin Knight. You guys will be uh, accompanying me today on my journey. Uh, basically, today's Wednesday. It's supposed to be my easy day, but um, coach switched it up. We're actually gonna work out today, so maybe you'll see some action of me working out. And yeah, welcome to my place. <laughs> All right, actually, I'm gonna make some breakfast now. Um, I know a lot of people on Instagram want me to chef it up, but we're just gonna do oatmeal today. For now, while I'm waiting for the water to boil, I'll kind of stretch out my legs and everything. Apparently I have tight calves. Oh, there's the kettle. So you dump two packets in. Yeah, brown maple and brown sugar. It's one of the best flavors. Yeah, I do have a nutritionist. Uh, her name's Jen. Shout out to Jen. She, uh, she's amazing. She works with Team Canada. She helped me eat with a purpose. She kind of helped me find foods that would, you know, give me energy. I noticed a huge difference just in terms of like, uh, you know, the way I compete. I feel healthy, you know, I feel lean and everything. So uh, she's the best. And I, I tell her that every time I talk with her that I appreciate her. Anybody that says this doesn't look good, you're too picky. Yeah, so a lot of people ask me how fast I go on my runs. I'll tell you this, in college I used to go like ridiculously slow because we used to run through a quarry. Um, nowadays, I go like anywhere between maybe like 6.15 per mile pace to 6.30 maybe. But then to be honest, on my doubles, I go pretty hard on my doubles, I'm not gonna lie. I'll run like, like 3.1 miles or 3.2 miles in about uh, like 16 minutes flat or something like that. The reason why I did that was because back in 2019, as you can see over here, I got last place at uh, the New Balance, what, what race was it? Yeah, it was the New Balance uh, World Indoor Tour or something like that. Prior to this race, I've never ran slower than 3.59 in a mile. And if you can read this, it says I ran 4.03, got last place and I just kind of held myself accountable and was able to whip myself back into shape but the way it kind of comes back to the doubling and stuff is like I used to not double um, for some odd reason during that time I was just not doubling and if I did double I would kind of just go like really slow and go through the motions so I think like when I was trying to like get back into shape I'd run my doubles really hard so and it kind of stuck actually I'll give you like how my uh, my training block looks because I, I won't like do 40 minutes for a double but uh, what I'll do is probably I'll run 60 minutes so on Monday I'll run 60 minutes in the afternoon I'll run 16 minutes because I told you guys I run 16 minute doubles and then uh, Tuesday I'll work out then I'll run another 16 minute double in the afternoon Wednesday I'll run 50 minutes then no doubling that day Thursday I'll run 55 minutes with a 16 minute double after in the, in the evening. Friday, workout, double later on in the evening, and then Saturday I'll run like 90 minutes, and Sunday, take Sunday off. <laughs> All right, so I just put on my workout clothing. What did I choose to wear? I just, usually I warm up in like pants, just cause like I feel like I'm kind of weird where I feel like it gives me a little bit of like resistance training. So on the warm up, it might feel like actually harder to open my stride. But then when I take off my pants, I'll be in half tights and like I'll feel like a lot smoother. Um, I'm wearing a lot of layers. Actually, I'm wearing this sweater. Everything's Reebok. Shout out to my sponsor. Uh, I got a long sleeve underneath and then like a t-shirt just because Virginia weather is weird. Like sometimes they'll say that it's warm outside and it actually might not be. So I figure it's better to uh, overdress than underdress. All right, let's go to practice. Huge rap fan. Shout out to Drizzy Drake. <laughs> yeah, big Drake fan. 
A lot of people expect me to listen to rap and stuff before I race. Um, but people would be surprised to know that I actually listen to Justin Bieber, like Bryson Tiller maybe. When I listen to like my hype rap songs, I get like too excited to the point that like I lost all my energy before the race even started. Um, the track that we're going to is University of Virginia. They have certain hours that like the public can use the track, so that's when we use it. And if we don't go to their track, usually in the summer we used to go to uh, Charlottesville High School. They have a really, really nice track over there. But it's kind of hard to use it when, when school's in session, so. All right, so basically I only have one activation exercise that I have to do before my run. It's just 15 quick, uh, 15 quick calf raises on my left foot. These are the Reebok Float Ride Energies. Uh, the second model, I think. Um, basically wear these shoes for every single run. I long run in them, I work out in them, do easy runs in them. I'd say it's probably Reebok's best shoe. What's up, boys? Nothing. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, just finished my warm up. Uh, it's pretty simple. We did a total of 25 minutes. At 60 minutes, we had a four minute pickup, and then what you saw probably over here was just me doing like five second strides. And then, uh, yeah, and then we'll go on the track start working out maybe do some stretching beforehand but yeah that's pretty much it <laughs> some people uh like to debate half tights versus split shorts but for me i wear half tights for workouts and uh split shorts for the races don't understand the science but that's what i do where we're at training wise is just i'm recovering just from a little hiccup Low injury, so I'm not doing anything too serious today. Probably, I'm either gonna work out with the girls or work out by myself, and hopefully get myself ready for the rest of the outdoor season. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So at 600, I want you to take off, okay. and then we're gonna run a 400. Okay. okay. Then they're gonna run a bunch of 600s. I think you should go through with them halfway and then take off. Okay. 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 Yep. All right. Not hard. It's not like a crazy. Test day. yourself a little bit on the fours. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yep. Okay. So the workout that I'm doing, I'm gonna work out partially with the girls. Uh, we're doing a full mile, but at the halfway point, I'm gonna probably take off and take off from the group that I'm running with and just finish strong. Uh, then after that we got a 60 second rest, probably run like maybe a 64 or 400. Um, then after that we'll do, I don't remember what the rest was, but we're gonna take some time off, run some 600s and then uh, same thing, like at 300 meters to go with the 600s, I'm gonna probably take off and run away from the group. It's uh, This is just me getting back into shape to be quite frank, so thankful to have awesome girl teammates to kind of drag me through. So we'll see how it turns out. All right, let's go. Let's run this how you feel. <laughs> Good job. All right, have a good rest of the workout. Yeah, the workout was, uh, it was pretty good. I mean, the thing is, it's like, uh, 
it's just tough knowing where I was last year and then, you know, being where I'm at this year. But the key thing, there's a first time for everything, but I think the most important thing in athletics and in any sport, it's just that it's all about effort. Um, it doesn't matter if you're further than where you expect yourself to be or behind. The effort should always be your best and as long as you keep that effort up, the progression will come. So I think that's the biggest thing about making a comeback is I think the battle is more so on the mental side than, uh, than it is the physical. And if you can uh, take care of your mental, keep doing this stuff to get you healthy for your physical then you know the progression will be there so I think that's the most important thing it's not uh not get too down just probably do like a 10 minute cool down mm. don't really the pace doesn't really matter it's just to say that you cool down and then uh we're gonna go see my physiotherapist after for 11 o'clock and uh and then uh go back home and then uh, shower up and then probably go, go get a massage. Take care of this body. Thanks, see you guys. I gotta go bounce and see Getty. See ya. Yeah. Tell me what he says, don't leave me hanging. Okay, I won't. Okay. Yeah, right. I'm gonna have to see him twice today because I gotta, I gotta go do some rehab now because we're supposed to do rehab and physio at the same time, but I'm not gonna have enough time, so I'm gonna see him now for rehab, and then I'll go back and see him for physio okay. at four. Okay. I'll rush over there as soon as I can, but I think I might it might be best to do the rehab first, and then if you still have that uh, that open slot at four for physio, that'd be great. Okay, sorry about that. All right, I'll see you soon. Yeah. So uh, a lot of people ask me if my training's kind of changed through college now as a pro um, I was very fortunate enough to keep the same coach that I had in college being coach Chris Fox if you guys saw him at the track um, he was my college coach at Syracuse and he's been my professional coach so been with him for like since 2014 so it's been a while now um, <laughs> and the, I wouldn't say that the cha training has really changed like a lot of the training at its core is the same, just like the, the style that we train in. Uh, lots of tempo work, some fart licks, um, lots of hills and stuff just to get a strong base. But uh, at the end of the day, I think the only thing that's really changed is just the fact that, um, that I run a, probably a little bit more mileage and the workouts that we do is just faster than, <laughs> than what I would do in college. I think it's really important like any distance runner or any runner in general, I try to tell these kids that you don't want to be, you know, just good at one event. I think it's really important in the NCAA and then also if you want to be a professional, like I think it's good to at least be good or great at two events so that, uh, you know, you kind of like sharpen each blade. So for me, even though like the 1500 meters is not my main event, but I do well in it because I have so much strength in the 5K. And then vice versa, where I do well in the 5K, it's because, you know, I, I work on my speed sometimes too. So I feel like the kind of make yourself like a double-edged blade if you uh, try to pride yourself on working on, um, on two areas of expertise, I guess you could say. Let's go inside. So this is Dr. Getty we're gonna see. He's my head physio here in Virginia. Helps me with like a lot of my prehab, rehab stuff. Also any physiotherapy that I need to do. This is my go-to guy. Now what we're about to do, go load the tissue, is actually going to make those changes that we need to see to help improve performance, reduce injuries, all the good stuff that why you should be going and seeing someone in the musculoskeletal space, which is just a fancy way to say body. Anyways, Getty, 
Catch you later. Hey, catch you later. I'll see you later. Uh, 3.30 yeah. today. Yes, sir. All right, so I just finished my little rehab session, physiotherapy. Um, right now, I'm probably just going to go home and shower real quick, and then uh, I'll meet up with you guys later. Yeah, I think uh, oftentimes I reminisce about my time in Syracuse, and, you know, Syracuse is a really special place for me for a lot of reasons. I watch myself grow up. Uh, I watch myself grow as a person, grow as an athlete, and um, even from an athletic standpoint, like I look at some of the things that were my favorite moments, or some of the times, and uh, people always ask me like, oh, what was your favorite moment at Syracuse, or your favorite race, or whatever, and I think it surprises people, because a lot of people want me, or expect me to say that when I won an individual NCAA title, it was like the best moment of my life there. Uh, whereas my favorite moment was winning NCAAs as a team in 2015. And uh, I think the reason behind that was just because we were the underdogs that year. And well, we were the underdogs most years, but we were the underdogs that year too. And uh, our team, we knew how good we were and we knew what we brought to the table and, you know, the potential success that we could have had at the end of the season and um, I think just being able to enjoy that as a team as a collective group you know will always be better than any individual success that um, I've had there because you know we all went to practice we all sacrificed together we all you know worked hard together you know had good memories together and stuff too and just to finally have it all work out was, was truly a blessing. So I think that was my most fond memory uh, amongst like a lot of other great times over there. But um, I think when you put in the hard work and it finally pays off, it's like the greatest feeling in the world. Yeah. All right. Time to go to my massage. <laughs> bonjour, bonjour. <laughs> Como ça va? You make me clean my house. <laughs> How's it going, Ernie? Good, thanks, Joe. Yeah, so right now I'm getting my massage by my masseuse, Ernie. I see him at least once a week. Two if we have a real problem <laughs> <laughs> to work on. But yeah, not too, too often, but uh, usually once a week try to get it's odd for me to see him in the same day that i get like i had a workout because today i worked out this week ah. usually i see him on like a day where it's a easy day but i think it's very important to keep the legs flushed out and you know just ready to to attack like the next week and the next workout and everything All right, so I just finished up with my massage. And um, right now we're probably gonna go back to see Dr. Getty, and do some physiotherapy. Um, it's probably just gonna work on my legs, make sure everything's fluid and uh, working properly. And maybe I'll get some needles done to, uh, you know, to help alleviate the pain. <laughs> so with a needle, you can get a whole lot deeper into some of those tissues. And so specifically for runners, it's really a great idea to look into somebody with some dry needling experience, especially working with athletes, just to get that reset button in those tissues for recovery. So my day's over. Um, I think this is one of the most important times of the day is to just chill out, hang out, get my mind right. And uh, what that means for me personally is uh, either play video games before I go to bed or before I make dinner for a little bit. And um, you know, I had a long day. I kind of just want to get my mind right and easy and just play a little bit before I make dinner. And uh, I figured I'd talk to you guys a little bit about my recruiting experience as I played the game. My coach was really good friends with um, an alumni from my school that was kind of closer to his age. And I remember the alumni kind of talking to Coach Fox and saying like, oh, you got to give this guy a chance. Um, I'm not just saying this because he went to my high school or anything, but um, 
you know, he's a really talented guy. And then Coach Fox kind of looked into my career and looked into me as an athlete, and he thought I was valuable enough to get a, get a scholarship or at least offer me a scholarship. And um, for a lot of kids, it's not as easy as that. Like, I have tons of friends, and I even had to, like, write letters to certain universities um, just to get their attention. Like, you know, for example, I think everybody's a fan of Oregon, but, you know, Oregon didn't reach out to me. I reached out to them. Um, we had a good conversation. It just wasn't going to work just with the timing of things. Even when I think back to, um, you know, Streamline and what they're kind of building for these kids, it's really, really, really helpful to kind of have people make those connections for you and help you get in contact with these coaches in these schools that, you know, you want to be a part of. And um, even opening your eyes to some schools that you might not have heard about, um, I think that's really important and I think it's going to do the kids a lot of justice and a lot of, um, a lot of positive just to kind of help have that help in recruiting. Golasso! <laughs> I think like in high school there's a couple of things that I didn't really know or understand about recruitment that I kind of know now and I think like a lot of people kind of including myself like just kind of try to rely on what your athletics can do for you when there's more to being a student athlete than just being an athlete. So I think that's the most important thing that I urge kids, not to, not that you haven't heard that before, but to try to understand that concept. You know, work just as hard in the classroom as, uh, as you do in your sports, because that 70% scholarship can turn into a full scholarship, maybe if you get, you know, a 30% academic aid, you know what I mean, or an academic scholarship. You know, recruiting, it can be fun, but it can be very stressful for anybody. But, you know, any information that you can get, any new information or information at all would probably benefit uh, for a lot of kids out there. So you should follow Streamline Athletes and definitely see the content and the information that they, they have posted on their, on their website. So uh, coming up in my season, I have a couple of races planned. Everything has just kind of been pushed back a little bit just because um, just bouncing back from a little, you know, a little hiccup in training and everything. So um, I'm just getting back into things, just trying to make sure that my body's right. The one thing about, you know, me and coach is like we don't like, we don't like competing if we're not going to be in a position to win. So I know people haven't seen me compete yet this year, but it's because like I'm not confident in the type of races that I'd go to that I'd be in a position to win. So. Um, People are going to have to hold on a little bit longer, but uh, it's a world championship year. So obviously, like everything I do is geared towards world championships. So I, I might not do too much racing this year, but I'll be able to make sure that I'm ready to compete at a high level at the world championship event. All right, guys, I just want to say thank you, uh, you know, for sticking along and following me on this, on my day to day routine. Um, got a lot of stuff done today. Um, this is exactly what I do, not every day, but it pretty much <laughs> a certain time of the week, my days are busy like this. And uh, I hope that I was able to answer whatever questions you guys might have been wondering about, you know, being a professional athlete or being an athlete in college or any sort of recruiting questions. But I highly encourage you guys, if there's anything else that I missed out on or anything you have more questions about, to reach out to Streamline Athletes and they'll definitely have all the answers for you for whatever question you're wondering. But once again, thank you. Uh, I usually go to bed early. Um, maybe I'll do a little bit stretching, maybe do a little bit more FIFA, but I'm probably just going to go off to bed soon. So you guys take care and all the best. Are we an item? Girl, stop playing. We're just friends. Girl, what are you saying? Oh, I messed it up. <laughs> <laughs> you know, earlier, there's a lot of complaints, a lot of chit-chatting, mouthing off about how Justin doesn't eat his vegetables. What do you see here? What do you see in there? Tell me. Oh, you can't talk on camera, can you? So what I have going on, I got a kale salad, cucumbers, raspberries, tomatoes. Usually I put some mango in there, but you know, I had to chill out. I didn't, you just left the mango out, but I made some salad. Sometimes I put blueberries in here as well. So I, I get my fruits and vegetables. That's all I gotta say. All right, sayonara. <laughs>